What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The So Yeah Show. Today, we're gonna be showing you episode nine, but before we get started, some introductions. My name's Brody. I'm Tiakum. I'm Zach. And this is The So Yeah Show. This month, guys, we have a killer lineup for you. The very first thing that we're gonna start off with is Tips with T, where I break down the number one tool that changed the quilting industry. After that, we're gonna move over to Fabricated, where I'm gonna show you a little tutorial on how to do spin art. Then, guys, we're gonna finish up with Will It Sew, we're gonna take a Bernina against concrete, and then finally, a special dad challenge, unlike one we've done before. Let's get to it. What's up, everybody? Now, today we're gonna to talk about a tool that literally revolutionized the quilting industry right here on Tips with T. Let's get started. So now, the very first thing that we wanna do is understand that quilting is old, like really, really old, like Adam and Eve old. And I've already talked about the history of quilting in one of my last videos, go ahead and check that out. But it took so long to start to revolutionize how we actually do quilting. For instance, back in the day, I'm gonna slide all this to the side. Back in the day, all we had was either a pair of scissors or some kind of knife. Maybe it was made out of rock or metal or steel, but that was our cutting tools. And literally what we had to do was grab some fabric, got some right here. You would lay out your fabric like so, get your uh, coal iron, right? Or your ember iron to iron this all out. You would have a template of the shape that you would like to make. Using some kind of marking tool, you'll mark all the way around this. Once you had your marks, let me grab a modern day marking tool like a, like a pen. You would mark all the way around this. And then what would happen is you have to account for that quarter inch seam. So I mark my template on my fabric then, ignore that paper, then you would take a ruler of sorts, lay it down on your line, and mark over one quarter inch away from your lines that you've already drawn from your template. That way we have our nice seam allowances here. I'm gonna do it just like so here as well, which we have to use this ruler backwards to achieve this. Okay, now a triangle, so it is three lines. I'm gonna do one more right here. And now that we have everything marked, it was time to cut. This is where you would pull out a knife, um, scissors, and you'll pull out your pair of scissors and hope you can cut straight. And you will be cutting out your fabric here. Now, we know that quilting is very accurate. So if you're a little bit off, it will show in the end. So hopefully you have steady hands to be able to do this. And so I'm gonna keep going out on this to show you something that I've cut. But imagine the difficulty of this if this was a 42 inch long strip, trying to keep everything perfectly straight. That's why I've always had this, this great, I've always, greatly admired when you see like borders on a quilt from back in the day and they're perfectly straight. I mean, it's not easy to accomplish. So once you would cut everything out, like so, and you can see that it's not quite perfect, but at least it's, it's a triangle, then we could sew them all together. And that was cutting back in the day. But we're not gonna talk about cutting back in the day, we're gonna talk about how it got modernized. Now, picture this, it's 1979. Tube tops and pantsuits were all the rage. McDonald's had the Happy Meal and ESPN was created. But nobody cares about that. In this year, the rotary cutter was invented, changing all of quilting. Now, who is the man who invented the rotary cutter? His name is Yoshio Okada. And not only that, he, prior to the rotary cutter, he had some other cutting inventions. He was actually the man who invented the snap-off blades that we see today in box cutters. And with this invention, he formed with his brother, the company Ulfa. After the establishment of his company, he invented, like we've said, the Ulfa rotary cutter. Now its primary design was for the garment industry so that you could make easier curves 
and longer cuts. Little did he know he was actually paving a new way of cutting for the quilting industry. Not only would this new light shine on cutting, he also invented new things in the quilting industry such as tube piecing or strip piecing because we were able to cut a longer distance and stay accurate. Now something that's cool is we actually have a 1979-1980 original Ofa cutter and big shout out to Yoshio Okada the inventor of this product for changing the way that we do things in quilting. So something that's crazy to think about and kind of funny in my, in my opinion here is that in 1830, we invented this really complex machine, which we call a sewing machine. And it took us 149 years after the invention of the sewing machine to change our cutting method to a rotary cutter. But let's also talk about the evolution of this cutter since 1979. So now let's go into the little bit of the evolution of these cutters since 1979. First off, the original here, you gotta realize it was a blade on a very straight, thin piece of plastic. That was crazy back then. But over time we figured out that, you know, you gotta make them different shapes so they fit people's hands better. Not only that, if you're really familiar with a Ulfa cutter, we made them a lot fatter now so your hand can actually get a nice grip onto it. And they also come in different brands like a Fisker pair. And we've even gotten two more ergonomic rotary cutters like a Martelli cutter. So nowadays there are four main blade sizes here, which are 18, 28, 45, and 60 millimeters. Now, whatever cutter you like best, use that one. Down in the description below though, let me know what you like best. Me, my preferred has always been this Martelli cutter. I feel like it fits my hand the best. But with inventions, also things start changing. If you go into an ergonomic cutter, they are both right and left-handed cutter. So you have to decide what you are. Not like the Ulfas where you can change from your right hand to left hand, doesn't matter which hand you cut with. Not only that, we've also been able to change sizes of blades. One of the original blades that was invented was the 28 millimeter. This was a phenomenal blade because of the small wheel, you were actually able to make a nice sharp turn. Again, invented for the garment industry. So when you wanted to cut out like sleeve holes and pant shapes and all that, it was very easy to use this cutter to make all your shapes. But from there, we've also evolved to the 45 millimeter cutter, which is what we traditionally use in quilting. It's good for pretty much everything. It's more of a universal cutter. It can't make as quite as a nice turn as a 28 millimeter, but it's still good for pretty much everything else. Then from there, we have 60 millimeter cutters, which is really good to cut things that are really thick, minkies, plush material, even things that are a little bit harder, denims and canvases and things like that. Super good, but again, buy the cutter that you like best and use that one. Now, not only with the invention of the rotary cutter, also different specialty blades were made as well. For instance, you have pinking blades, slash cut blades, chenille blades, a whole sort of specialty blades here. And I would say the majority of these, most of us have never seen, I know I haven't. I used a pinking blade once to say I used a pinking blade, but other than that, these are very specialty niche blades. But universally, 95% of us will be using the 45 millimeter blades, whether it be a Martelli or Fisker or Olfa, it's kind of the generic one size fits all. So now this would not be a tips with tea if there weren't actually tips. So let me slide everything out of the way and show you some stuff. So my very first tip here guys is something very, very basic. Go into your local quilt store and try some of the rotary cutters that they have because they don't fit everyone's hands quite the same and they don't cut the same for everyone. So go in there, make sure you like how it feels as you're cutting. Maybe you want an Ulfa 28 millimeter or maybe you want a Martelli 45 millimeter. Go ahead, try them out. If your hands are hurting while you're cutting, it's not the rotary cutter for you. Now, there's a lot of tips out there that we all already know with like the different size blades, the different size cutters, try them out, see what one you like the best. You guys all know all that. Let's get into the ones that will actually give you more life out of your blade and some actual tips. One of my favorite tips here is that you have to understand how this blade actually looks. It goes straight down and it chamfers off on both sides to a singular point. 
much like a rollerblading wheel. Why is this so important? These wheels are designed to stand straight up and down. How we always cut and how most people always cut is they put it up against their ruler, have a slight tip whether they're right-handed or left-handed, and they cut down. Does the blade cut? Absolutely. But what is actually happening to your blade is you're warping it. I'll show you this right now. When we put our blade down and push downward on this, you can see the blades actually bending, which then gives you a really crappy cut and ruins your mat at the same time. And a warp blade will not cut straight, just like a bent wheel will not drive straight. So make sure when you're making your cuts, you're putting your rotary cutter straight down on your fabric, make sure it's perfectly up and down or as close as you can get, and you make your cut. Not too much downward pressure. The blade is sharp for a reason. If you do this, it will literally 10 times the life of every one of your blades. Another thing is, is you can literally hear if you're cutting your fabric. That's how you know if you have enough pressure going down. You can hear it all the way down the length, and you'll know that is a perfectly straight cut. What happens a lot when we get these little nicks in our blade or we bent our blade, like I'll use this one because I know this blade's bent because I just bent it so you guys can see. You cannot actually cut, it's actually pulled here, all the way through it because you have a little bend in your blade. That's why you're getting that. Most of the time it's actually not a nick in your blade, it's actually a bent blade. The next step here more has to do with rulers and rotary cutters together which is, let's say we have to make the same cut over and over and over again. The best way to do that is mark your ruler. That way you can make your cuts seamlessly every single time. Let's say I need to make 30 degree cuts all day long. On my ruler, I have my 30 degree mark. I've got some blue painter's tape. And I'm gonna lay it down just like so. This is a really old school trick, I know. By doing that, you know you need to line up with this edge of the blue tape. Not only that, you can mark on it and tell yourself where you want it to line up. So that way, let's say we need to cut some um, bias binding or anything like that. We now can cut these on, let's say they're like a um, couple inch intervals here. And you can make the exact same cut repetition style with ease. So this is really a dumb pro tip, but I know it is, but you should know this. People don't seem to think there's a difference in quantity when you're buying blades. It is always cheaper to buy the five pack of blades than it is the singular pack. Plain and simple. That's one that people don't know for some reason. Mm -hmm. not, not only that, it's like a Fun fact of the day, if you buy one blade or you buy 10 blades, it's like the 20% savings per blade. Fun fact of the day. Next one, this is a pro tip that people have to be mindful of, especially the older that they get. Now don't, I can already see the messages in, in the bottom right that are like, oh my gosh, he called us old. No, I'm saying that some blades have easy change blades and some don't. So for instance, Martelli cutters, these are physically tightened on there. So you really have to tighten them up to get them to work. Now, if you have arthritic hands, this is probably not the best option for you. As opposed to a quick change blade, literally I pull down on this tab and my blade pops off. Make sure you figure out which one you have and which one you like the most. This one's another one of those tips that like you should know, but not everyone knows. They actually make different holes by different brands and different size of rotary cutter blades. For instance, if you get like a pro ergonomic Ulfa blade, it actually has little notches in it, so it can only be used in that blade. So make sure if you really like the company or really like the rotary cutter that you use, what you're committing to there as far as blades go. So two things really quickly here. First is any of the rotary cutters that you've seen here, we have available on soyacolteen.com. Down in the description below, you'll be able to pick up any ones that you like. and. My personal favorite is the Martelli 45 millimeter for anyone who wants to know. And let me know also down in the description below if you quilted without rotary cutters, like before the rotary cutter was invented. It'd be cool to see how many of you there are that did do that. Thank you so much guys for watching this episode today on the brief history of rotary cutters and kind of how they've evolved over the years. And that wraps up this episode of Tips with T. So on back over to my brothers.
What's up everybody, welcome back to Fabricated, the quilting themed show for the non-quilter. In this episode, we're going to be making some spin art. Let's get started. To make this project, you're going to need the following supplies. You're going to need some framed canvas, you're gonna need some spray paint, a power drill, some acrylic paint, which you can get any brand you want, it's not gonna matter. And then you're gonna need a jig, which I'm going to explain how you make very briefly. I'm also using a stencil, that's just for this particular design I'm doing. To make the jig is a really simple process. You need a piece of wood that is about the width of your canvas. All you do, mark an X on it, like you see right there, and then drill a hole in the center and put a bolt through it. Just try and get it in the center, you don't want it like off to the side like that, or things are gonna get really wobbly. So you put it in the center and then put a screw through the jig and into your frame on both sides, which I'll do right here. The next step is to hook your canvas to your drill. All you're gonna do is take that bolt, slide it into the chuck on your drill and tighten it down. Now we are ready to paint. I take my colors, shake them up so they're all nice and mixed. I take my black paint, and I'm gonna just kind of haphazardly swirl it on there. There we go. And then same thing with the red, but I'm gonna kind of go in a circle here. I wanna get kind of a explosion look. All right, I've got my paint applied to my canvas. Now let's go ahead and spin it. All right, check that out. You know what? I really like that. I don't think there's any re reason to add a touch up or anything like that. We're gonna go ahead and move to our next square. Here's round two. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I. You know, I'm gonna do a little touch up there of black. If you don't like the way it's looking, or if you if it doesn't look quite balanced or or what have you, you can just add in a little extra something something. That. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want right there. Now for this one here, I'm just gonna do some black and white. I'm gonna leave an empty space in the center to put a little stencil on there. Let me go like that. A little more. There. Right there. And there. I like that. All right, let's move on to the last one. Right. We'll just call it. Okay, I like that. Add a little more. Yeah, there. That gave it a little more fling look. Now that we have all of our pieces painted, I'm gonna add a last finishing touch and put our Soya logo on two of these. So what I did for this is I took a piece of poster board that I had from a previous project and I cut out our logo. I'm gonna lay this over the top of my canvas. My canvas is dry here, I should probably say that. Now I'm gonna take a can of white spray paint and I'm just going to kind of dust this until I get it where I want it. I'm gonna be really careful here so I don't move any of these little pieces and I don't want the paint to go underneath the stencil and smear onto my canvas. Oh yeah, I should say so yeah. So as you can see here, my stencil wasn't quite down on my canvas all the way, so it got kind of hazy around the lettering and the machine. That's all right, no need to panic if this happens to you. Just take a little fine detail brush and get some of your black acrylic paint and just fill in around it. And super simple, happens to the best of us, and nothing to fret about. And there you have it, our four patch is done. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fabricated. If you did, please give us a like and consider subscribing to our channel. We would love to see what it is that you and your loved ones are doing. So if you make this project or any of the others on our previous episodes, please tag us in your social media, hashtag Soya Brothers and hashtag Soya Quilting. Thank you so much, that's it for this episode. Let's send it back to the studio.
What's up, everybody? Welcome to this month's episode of Will It Sew. Today, we're gonna take this Bernina 830 and we are going to bury it in concrete inside of this barrel. Let's get it. So guys, there's a little bit of prep work that we're gonna do. Obviously, if we open this up, if we just dump concrete in there, it'll never sew, right? We'll never be able to get the concrete out. So we're just gonna do a little bit of prep work here, cover the holes on the top, and then we'll start prepping the concrete. I'm just taping the motor here, because if we just dump water into it, then we won't have a machine that's sewing. It's just like when we are at the lake, we waterproofed the motor. It's the same thing. Obviously, anything electronic, if it gets wet, concrete's wet. If you take the run. heart out of something, it's never going to run again. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's ready to rock and roll. Now what we're gonna do, guys, we're gonna take this machine, we're gonna set it aside, and we're gonna take this barrel here, cut it in half, and then we're gonna mix in one side, pour the concrete in the other, and uh, then we're gonna have to wait like three days. So, here we go. Yep. All right, everybody, so we've got Thanks to Zach, some concrete here mixed up. And we're gonna get the machine now. We have some here in this barrel. We're gonna put the machine in to kind of set it in concrete first, and then we're gonna cover the rest of it with concrete, so. Push it down in there. We are gonna need a couple more bags of uh, concrete, though. Oh, yeah. I'll do that on top. Alright everybody, so we just finished, uh, as you saw, putting this machine in here in the concrete. The concrete is wet, as you can tell. See it jiggling? Um, it's Friday at about noon. We're gonna come back yep. here Monday morning and uh, we're gonna bring a jackhammer because, hey, let's face it, that's the only way it's gonna come out of here. And uh, we're gonna see will it sew, so see you in a bit. So, as you guys have seen, we've jackhammered this out. Now what it's time to do is it looks like we're in a good situation here, but we have to get all the pebbles and the rocks and all that that have fallen inside out of here. Fill it full of water to try to get out all the dust and all that kind of stuff out of the machine. And then hopefully, hypothetically, it will sew. So, let's do that. Now we shouldn't have to say this. We are trained professionals. Don't put water in your sewing machine. This is all for fun and games, not for actual real life scenario. Doing it. There's actually a really high chance of this machine running. So essentially there's this gear that's supposed to be right here in the sewing machine that allows when the motor's turning to turn the rest of the machine. When Brody stuck the jackhammer through this and it broke this piece. So I just want to test to make sure the motor's working currently. That way you guys can see that motors can actually be submerged into water. Um, but we'll use a drill for today to turn the crankshaft. It's the same thing as a motor, just a power tool instead. So just like last time guys, we've bypassed the motor with a screw gun here, that way it can turn. Again, with it being wet, not the best idea to turn it on. But what we're going to do now is clip back on. This is the tension disc for the top here. And we're gonna just put that right back into place there. The, it's right there, so you wanna hand me that. The bottom unit here needs to be put back on. Hopefully it just clips back into place. Sort of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I've got my needles. Every good sewing project starts with a brand new needle. Just wanna let everyone know that. What I'm gonna do is take these two fat quarters here. This, I think this is the first time we're not using grunge, just so everyone know. Got some Dan Morris here. Gonna cut some squares to make ourselves our half square triangle to see if this thing sews. Where's my pair of scissors? Right there. Pretty fabrics, you can get this on sawyerquilting.com if you'd like. I wanna say this is called Tropicana by Dan Morris. All right, Brody, this is you. This is your moment. You're sewing. All right, guys, let's see if this works. Press it down.
All right, good. Make sure everyone sees that we're cutting it off the machine. It's actually not a bad, I mean, look at the stitches. Yeah. They didn't even go out of time or anything. Go ahead, Brian, take that from me. How bad would I cut my stitch right now? Cut the stitch in half. Here we go, guys. Will it sell after you bury it in concrete? Absolutely. Yes, it will. Boom, baby. Did it sew? It sewed, all right. Check that out. And the stitches aren't even that bad. Look at that. Back my truck. It'll sew after being buried in concrete. Absolutely. Never had a doubt in my mind. I'm completely shocked by it. But hey, it just goes to show you, if you have a high quality machine, regardless of the brand, be it a, Bern be it a Bernina, be it a Janome, be it a Brother, a Burnett, whatever, if you have a high quality machine, it is going to last. That is freaking awesome. Now, we've tried absolutely everything, and like we said in the past, guys, down in the description below, go ahead and leave us a comment where you want to see the next machine or what we should do with the next machine. But we're going to send it right back to us in the other set. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge. We're going to do a challenge this month that's a little bit different. We're gonna do the challenge like it's going to my sons. However, I'm doing this challenge to everyone. So whether it's if I'm young enough to be your son then it's the son challenge or it's the dad challenge if you're young or it's the friend challenge if you are my age. Um, we're doing drawstring bags. Uh, watch, watch our video for the drawstring bags as it will give you the instructions on how to do those video, those bags to send them out. We're also going to add a little twist to it is the challenges to all of you to get these bags put together. And in our family, we do what's called a twofer. Uh, anytime you can do a service project that is a service project, you get two service projects in one. So we're encouraging everyone to go out to someone that is homebound or to teach a child or to teach someone how to sew as a service project as you're, serv as you're actually sewing your service project. So if you'd watch the video, you'll see it on their YouTube channel on Drawstring Bags and have a great time doing this and send some of your experiences to us so that we can see how well you've done. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us for episode nine of the Soya yeah Show. Tiankum, thank you for showing us history You're behind welcome. rotary cutters. I mean, think of where we'd be today without rotary cutters. Just like it was before, and knives and scissors. Know, right, no <laughs> kidding. And then Zach, Zach's always been our, our creative brother here. Thank you for showing us fabricated this month. You're welcome. Something I really like about spin painting is that it's a great project to do with kids, and you can get together, have a barbecue, it's gonna south side thing. Out of the back lawn. Out of the back lawn, and just have a good time with it. And you know, be out of the box, do something crazy. You heard that subtle hint that Zach's a child. You know, <laughs> do it with like your... We can do this. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> do it as a kid. Uh, do, I mean, do it with your kids. <laughs> yeah, do it as a kid, <laughs> be a kid, all that. Uh, so guys, uh, will it so? Let us know, we're gonna put a little poll up, something we've been starting to do with YouTube. We're gonna put a little poll up, and we wanna see what you want to see for will it so, so make sure that you look for that in the next coming couple days, or comment down below and let us know what you want to see yeah, next. Yeah, will it so in the Bahamas, will it so in the ocean, exactly. will it so in like somewhere that, warm, right? will it so in somewhere. <laughs> and then finally guys, we hope that you'll join us for our dad challenge. These service projects that we're doing are super important. They help out in the communities. And like we said, this, these bags are gonna be going out to Rhode Island to one of our awesome customers that runs the Five Star Super well, Kitchen. And something that's really nice is that you know, it's, it's not like, you know that it's going where you want it to go. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, it's all posted on social media so you can see it you and can be part see of it, it as well. And so track everything that's, that's going really on, nice guys. To have. So everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, hit that like button, comment down below the things you want to see in the show, what you liked, what you didn't like. Let us know and share this video with your friends, guys. We are the Soya Brothers. This is the Soya Show and we'll see you next time. See ya.